A video shows gunmen kidnapping them as they were caught in a shootout between cartel gangs. And if you look closely, you will see gang members force McGee into the back of a pickup truck along with others who appear hurt. Here you see McGee being forced into the back of a pickup truck. Woodard and Brown were killed. And that's when Shahid said, I love y'all, I'm gone. And he died right there. He was the back of the truck. Yeah, that he loved us and he was gone. That was the last thing he said. Did you know that over 1 million Americans traveled to Mexico in 2022 for medical tourism, spending about $250 million in medical expenses? Many of these Americans were looking for cheaper and faster alternatives to cosmetic surgery, dental care, or weight loss procedures. But not all of them returned home safely. In this video, we will be exploring the shocking and tragic story of Latavia Washington McGee and four friends who unfortunately became the victims of Mexico's cartel violence. They were kidnapped, tormented, and two of their friends murdered before their very eyes by one of the most violent and powerful narco gangs in Mexico. How did this happen? What were the motives behind this horrific crime? And will there be any survivors? Let's find answers in this video. The North American nation of Mexico is facing a serious threat from kidnappings and other cartel-related acts of violence. According to official statistics, more than a thousand people were abducted in Mexico in 2022 alone. One of the most shocking cases of these kidnappings happened in 2023, involving four Americans who were captured by armed men in the Mexican border city of Matamoros. Now, many people are worried that this will not be the last incident of its kind unless the authorities take decisive action to stop the kidnappers. It was a sunny day on the 3rd of March, 2023, when four Americans crossed the border from Brownsville, Texas, to Matamoros, Tamaulipas, a city in Mexico. They were traveling in a white minivan with a North Carolina license plate, but that day, they had no idea that their trip would turn into a nightmare within hours of crossing the border into Mexico and making their way to Matamoros. As they drove through the streets of Matamoros, a group of armed men in a white pickup truck ambushed them and opened fire. We turned down this little side road because we was going to see if that led us to the destination and we was going to turn around. We heard a car beat the horn and pulled around us. Zendel was in the back seat. He said, don't stop. He saw a gun. We drove through a few streets and corners until we got back on the main street. And that's when a gang of shooting started. Zendel, and Shahid, they jumped out to run, and they were gunned down. Williams tried to make his escape through the driver's door, but he too was gunned down. And I jumped out of the driver's side, and when I jumped out on the driver's side, that's when I was shot in both legs. A video of the terrifying scene was recorded by a bystander and later posted on Twitter, from where it went viral on social media platforms. The video showed how the four Americans, who were later identified as Latavia Washington McGee, her cousin, Eric Williams, and their two other friends, Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown, were dragged into the kidnapper's vehicle. They then drove them to a remote location where they threatened and interrogated them to ascertain their identities. After the gunmen interrogated them, they took Williams to a local clinic where a botched surgery was performed on him without giving him any anesthesia to alleviate his pain. They put my leg on a two by four and then they stitched it up. They, they just stitched it up? Right. Did they give you? No pain medicine or nothing. They just stitched it up. Meanwhile, McGee was held in a room with their other friend, Zindel, who was badly injured and was fighting for his life. Me and him was in the room together. And he was fighting for his life and they didn't do nothing. They didn't do anything to treat him. Moments later, he succumbed to his injuries and died. I just told him I'm sorry because I asked him to come with me. And he was like, it's okay, I'm your brother. I'm supposed to be there for you. I love you. After Zendel passed, McGee was now left alone with her cousin Williams, and one of the gunmen showed them the footage of them being kidnapped as recorded by an eyewitness. One of the gunmen actually showed you the video that we've all seen of you being kidnapped on the street. Mm -hmm. That's surreal. I mean, what did that, what was that like? I just started crying. They then tried to make them sleep with each other, but the duo refused. 
telling them they were brothers and sisters. They tried to make us have sex with each other, but we was brothers and sisters. Brother and sister, and that she was pregnant. Wait a minute. I, I, they tried to make you have sex with each other. Mm -hmm. What did they say to you? They was like, what are y'all? We said brothers and sisters. And they was like, have sex with each other. I was like, no, these are my brothers. I'm pregnant. This incident was confirmed and announced three days later by the U.S. and Mexican authorities. The kidnapping and murder of those Americans in Mexico is throwing a harsh spotlight on the billion dollar business of medical tourism. The four victims drove from Lake City, South Carolina, 1,500 miles to Matamoros. The authorities then immediately launched a joint operation to rescue the victims and arrest the perpetrators. In their efforts to find the victims, they offered a $15,000 reward for any information that could lead to their rescue. Following a series of investigations and raids, the authorities finally located the two survivors at a house outside the city of Matamoros in the early hours of Tuesday, the 7th of March, 2023. Police rescued Williams and McGee from this wooden shack and took them to a hospital across the border in Brownsville, Texas today. They also found the bodies of Woodard and Brown. However, the rescue operation was not without casualties because as you already know, two of the victims were dead. Latavia Washington McGee was the one who organized this trip with her cousin, Williams, and two of their other close friends who were going to Mexico to buy medical supplies. Latavia McGee, a 33-year-old mother of six, was having a tummy tuck, paying less than half the cost in Mexico than in the U.S. She was with three male companions who were reportedly buying medical products. McGee, on her own, was going to get cosmetic surgery in Matamoros, a city where she found a doctor who offered tummy tucks at a lower price compared to the obtainable prices in the U.S. The group had left South Carolina last week for the more than 1,300-mile trip to Mexico. McGee Williams, along with friends Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown, traveled to Matamoros so McGee could have cosmetic surgery. McGee had seen the ads online, and she decided to take the chance to get the surgery at a fraction of the price. So she invited her cousin and two close friends to go together with her, since they too needed to buy a few medical supplies from there. However, McGee's family did not approve of this idea. Her mother particularly had a bad feeling about the trip and begged her daughter to cancel it. She sensed that something would go terribly wrong, and she warned McGee of the dangers of crossing the border and of the cartel-related violence that plagued Mexico. But she brushed off her mother's concerns. She assured her that she would be fine and that she would be back before she knew it. But she was wrong. Their ordeal began when they crossed the border from Brownsville, Texas to Matamoros. The four friends had booked into a hotel in Brownsville, Texas the day before, and they planned to drop off McGee at the local clinic for her scheduled tummy tuck procedure and then return to the hotel to wait for her. However, while on their way to the doctor's office, they got lost in the unfamiliar streets and could not easily find their way due to poor cell phone reception. As they drove around, looking for the clinic, they were ambushed by a group of armed men in a van who opened fire at their rented vehicle, fatally injuring the four occupants of the vehicle, including the driver. A video recorded by a bystander showed the gunmen loading the victims into their pickup truck. And shortly after that, they drove them to a remote location. Here you see McGee being forced into the back of a pickup truck. Woodard and Brown were killed. Before this video went viral on social media, the authorities had been alerted by a woman identified as Cheryl Orange, who claimed that she was with the four friends at their hotel in Brownsville. Cheryl knew about their plan to drop off their McGee at her doctor's appointment and return to the hotel afterward. According to Cheryl, the journey from the hotel to the doctor's office shouldn't have taken them more than 15 minutes, but she was alarmed when they didn't return as planned after several hours. So, she reported them missing the next day, and her description of the matched the kidnapped victims that were seen in the viral video on social. The Mexican and U.S. authorities quickly swung into action to rescue the victims. However, their efforts were frustrated by the gunmen who were moving the victims from one location to another to avoid being caught because they knew that the authorities were on their trail. But knowing that the victims could turn up dead if nothing was done very quickly, the investigators worked tirelessly to track the gunmen down, using every possible clue and resource at their disposal. 
They processed the vehicles involved in the crime, collected fingerprint and ballistic evidence, took biological samples for DNA analysis, and scanned every surveillance camera footage they could find. Finally, on March 7, 2023, the U.S. Attorney General of Police announced that they had rescued the victims after finding them at a building on the outskirts of Matamoros. 15 minutes from the doctor's office, their rented white SUV was fired on by gunmen from the feared Gulf cartel that controls the border city. Two of the men were found dead today. The third was wounded. The victim who went for the tummy tuck is reportedly unharmed. At the house where the two survivors were rescued, law enforcement officers arrested a man who was guarding the victims, and he was later identified as a member of the Gulf cartel one of Mexico's most notorious narco cartels. Tamaulipas is a state that lies on the border between Mexico and the United States. It is a gateway for travelers, tourists, and traders who seek to explore the diverse and rich cultures of both countries. Many Americans who live in nearby Texas visit Tamaulipas for various reasons, to shop for goods, to enjoy medical tourism with affordable and quality healthcare, or to reunite with their relatives. More than a million Americans traveled to Mexico last year for things like medical procedures and medicine, spending about $250 million. Medical tourism is a huge industry and it's growing. Until we get costs down here in the United States, it's going to continue to grow. Every year, thousands of young people flock to South Padre Island in Texas for their spring break, and many of them cross the border to experience the nightlife of Matamoros, a city in Tamaulipas. But behind the facade of fun and festivity, there is a dark and sinister reality that haunts Tamaulipas in recent years. It is a reality of violence, bloodshed, and terror caused by the ruthless and relentless narco cartels that fight for the control of the state and its lucrative smuggling routes. You have to keep in mind that those are drug routes that the cartels protect with their lives. The case of McGee and two of her entourage who were brutally murdered in Tamaulipas is a grim reminder of the horrors that have been unleashed in this region for more than a decade. The main culprit behind these horrors is the Gulf Cartel, one of the oldest and most powerful criminal organizations in Mexico. The Gulf Cartel, also known as Cartel del Golfo, or CDG, has been operating in Mexico since 1984 when Juan Garcia Abrego inherited the narco-trafficking business from his uncle, Juan Nepomuceno Guerra. Shortly after that, he forged an alliance with the Cali Cartel, a Colombian narco-cartel led by the Rodriguez Orejuela brothers and Jose Santa Cruz Londoño to transport c across the Mexican border and share the profits equally. However, in 1996, Garcia Abrego was captured and extradited to the United States. But unlike other narco cartels that fell apart in the aftermath of their leader's arrest or death, the Gulf Cartel did not crumble. The cartel continued to expand its network and influence, reaching major cities in the US, such as Houston, Atlanta, New York, and Los Angeles. As the cartel became more powerful, it corrupted, or should I say took advantage of already corrupted Mexican government officials and law enforcement agencies who turned a blind eye to their activities. In the aftermath of Garcia Abrego's arrest, Ociel Cardenas Guillén succeeded him and took the cartel to a new level of power and brutality. He challenged the Cali cartel, which was then the dominant force in the narco trade, and recruited elite soldiers from the Mexican Special Forces who were trained in advanced weaponry and tactics to serve as his personal bodyguards. He paid them three times more than what they earned in the army and gave them the name of Los Zetas, or the Zs. Cardenas was a fearless and ambitious leader who did not hesitate to confront his enemies, even the U.S. authorities. In 1999, he and his Zetas ambushed a group of U.S. agents who were investigating a narco shipment in Matamoros and threatened to assassinate them. The agents, however, managed to escape, but the incident sparked a manhunt for Cardenas, who was eventually arrested in 2003 and extradited to the U.S. in 2007. He was tried, convicted, and sentenced to 25 years in prison in 2010. Following his capture and subsequent imprisonment, the Gulf Cartel entered a period of instability and turmoil. Over time, 
the cartel lost most of its power and notoriety. But what ultimately led to the cartel's downfall was the betrayal of its own creation, the Los Zetas. The Zetas, who had grown in numbers and strength, decided to break away from the Gulf Cartel and form their own organization. You had this small unit which it grew and grew, and that is the set that's inside the Gulf Cartel, until eventually it was like a whole army within the Gulf Cartel that would rise up saying, we don't need you anymore, we're gonna take this for ourselves. Soon, they became the most feared and violent gang in Mexico, notorious for their brutal methods of tormenting their victims, executing them, and hanging their body parts from bridges. Sometimes they dissolve them in vats of acid or burn them. They also prepare guisos. These are stews where you take a member of the family and you put them in a pig boiler and you put gasoline on them and then you set a match to them. They burn these, these individuals in a 55 gallon drum using diesel because diesel burns slower. The Zetas waged a bloody war against the Gulf Cartel and other rival groups for the control of Tamaulipas and other strategic territories. This war resulted in thousands of deaths, kidnappings, extortions, and displacements, turning Tamaulipas into a war zone. And then break away from the Gulf Cartel and form its own organization. And this erupting into open warfare in 2010 between the Setas and the Gulf Cartel. The Gulf Cartel, meanwhile, struggled to maintain its cohesion and leadership. In the aftermath of Cardenas's arrest, several of his successors were either killed or captured, such as Eduardo Costilla Sanchez, Antonio Cardenas Guillén, and Jose Antonio Romo Lopez. The cartel also split into several factions, such as the Scorpions, Cyclones, Rojos, Metros, and Panthers, each with their own agendas and interests. The Gulf Cartel, lost much of its power and prestige and became a shadow of its former self. Today, the Gulf Cartel is no longer a unified entity, but a collection of splinter groups that compete and sometimes cooperate, depending on the situation. However, the cartel still engages in narco and arms trafficking, migrant smuggling, and other criminal activities, but it faces fierce competition from the Los Zetas and other emerging cartels such as the Jalisco New Generation Cartel and the Sinaloa Cartel. The Gulf Cartel's glory days are long gone, but the legacy of its violence and corruption still lingers in Tamaulipas and beyond, as we have just witnessed in the case of McGee and his friend who were the unfortunate victims of the cartel's violence. But just a few days after McGee and her cousin were rescued, the Gulf Cartel did something that shocked everyone. On March 9, 2023, just two days after McGee and his cousin were rescued, a shocking revelation emerged from the investigation. The Tamaulipas State Law Enforcement Agency released a letter that contained an unexpected confession and apology from a member of the Scorpions, a splinter group of the notorious Gulf Cartel. The letter admitted that the Scorpions were behind the kidnapping that sparked the violent confrontation and expressed remorse for the harm caused to the innocent victims and their families. And the cartel, investigators believe is responsible for the crimes, is now apologizing to the victims' families. The letter reads, The Gulf Cartel Grupo Escorpiones strongly condemns the events of Friday, March 3rd, in which, unfortunately, an innocent working mother died and four American citizens were kidnapped, of which two died. For this reason, we have decided to hand over those involved and directly responsible for the events who at all times acted under their own determination and indiscipline and against the rules in which the CDG has always operated. In a surprising twist, the Tamaulipas security operatives reported that five men, presumably the kidnappers, were found bound and gagged inside that same vehicle they had used to carry out the attack on McGee and her entourage. But they mentioned as part of that letter that they handed over members of their group. There was a photo that surfaced online showing five men on the pavement, their shirts pulled over their heads. Uh, we could not confirm that that was an actual, uh, those were actually part of this incident. The mystery of this attack has sparked a heated debate between the U.S. and Mexican authorities. While a U.S. official claimed that the victims were deliberately targeted by a ruthless Mexican cartel, the Attorney General of Tamaulipas, Irving Barrios Mojica, dismissed this theory as baseless. He argued that this was just a case of mistaken identity 
and not a deliberate act of violence. The Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, also supported his attorney general and accused the political opponents in both countries of sensationalizing the case. He urged the public to wait for the final results of the investigation before jumping to any conclusions. However, to date, the public is still in the dark about the true motive behind the abduction and is eagerly anticipating the truth to come out. But do you really think that this was a case of mistaken identity? Or do you believe that the cartel had any reason to target McGee and his entourage for this attack? Please feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do well to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching guys. Until next time, please stay safe.